Hey everybody, so a lot of people have been asking me how to make a mana just system or whatever tutorial in housing to where you can have an item, you can right click it to use ability using mana, and depending on different armor or pets or items you're holding, your mana can increase. So yeah, if that's something you're interested in, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So first, you're going to start by creating a poison loop. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Basically, to go to your housing menu, go to house settings, go to event actions, and on the player join event, we're just going to add a potion effect. This will be the poison effect. Have it the duration for 2 million seconds, which means it's pretty much the entire time they're in the house. The level needs to be 10, and override existing effects needs to be on. Next, in case your house includes killing or respawning, which I would recommend just doing anyway, either even if your house does not include this, go to your player's respawn event and add the same thing. We're just going to add poison for 2 million seconds, level 10, and override existing effects on. Okay, now go to your player damage event, add a action. This will be the conditional. Inside the conditions, we're going to check if the damage cause is poison, which if it is, then we are just going to oops, cancel the event, meaning they won't take damage, and then we'll have more stuff after here, which I'll show you in a minute. If you run into any issues, I'd also just recommend doing this now. Go to your PvP and damage settings, and make sure poison slash wither damage is on. Okay, we're all set for that. We're going to go again to our housing menu, house settings, functions. We're going to create two functions for this tutorial. Now, this is for other stuff. Just ignore it, please. Anything in this tutorial will have a ender pearl icon. So we're gonna create one called mana handler and calculate mana. Now we're gonna go back to event actions, player damage inside this conditional and the if actions, we're gonna have it trigger the function mana handler. So now we're back to functions, go to mana handler and just follow what I do from here. So first we're gonna start by changing a player stat. We're just gonna call it max mana. Now just as a default and for a lot of different games, they have the max at 10 for starting off. Sorry, I meant 100. So we're just going to copy that format and just keep it at 100. Now you can change this to whatever you want. Just know that this is going to be the default max mana that a player would start with. Then we're going to want to trigger a function. And this is our other thing, um, calculate mana. Here we go. And then from here, we're going to need two conditionals. So starting with the first one, we're going to have a conditional that checks if the player's mana, which is the stat we'll use for the player's actual mana. We're going to check if that is less than stat.player slash max mana. Now we're checking if the mana is less than the max mana, which if it is in the if actions, we're going to take mana and add 20. Now this can be whatever you want. You can even use another stat for this. Just for the tutorial, I'm using 20, so it'll go up pretty quick. After that conditional, we're going to create another conditional. And inside here, oops, we're gonna, inside here, we're going to check if mana is greater than stat.player slash max mana. I want to point out a lot of people are also confused when I do stuff like this, the stat.player. I am using, I'm just going to go right back into it in a second. I'm using the placeholders. They have a huge list of placeholders you can use by doing the command slash placeholders. So what I'm doing in this case is stat.player and then the key, which is max mana or mana or whatever we're doing. So going back into the function, we're going to continue with the condition here. We check if mana is greater than our max mana, which if it is, so that means, that means a bug happened or something like that. We're just going to set mana to our max mana. So mana set player stat.player.max or slash max mana. And there we go, we're done with this function. Now we're gonna have what's inside of the calculate mana function. So let's go to the calculate mana function. And from here, it's pretty much up to you, but I'm gonna show you an example of what you can do. So I just gave myself two items. I have a diamond sword and a diamond chest plate. We're gonna go inside the calculate mana and we're just gonna add an action. We're gonna add a conditional. And basically in this condition, we're gonna check if the player has the diamond chest plate. And instead of anywhere, we're going to check if they have it on their armor. So they have it, they're wearing it currently. Which, if they are, then we're going to take max mana and increase it by 20. So now, if they have this on, then our max mana will go from 100 to 120. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with the sword, we're going to, in the conditions, check if the player has a diamond sword. And we're going to check if they have it in their hand. If they do, which if they do, then we're going to, which if they do, in the if actions, we're going to take max mana and add we'll do 30. So if we go in survival then you'll never guess but we are actually gaining mana and our mana is having a max and stuff like that but we can't see it so it is up to you on where you want mana to shown you can be in an action bar it can be on the scoreboard I'm just gonna show you on the scoreboard I'm just gonna get rid of everything here we're gonna add a item we're gonna use a custom line and we're just gonna put and this will be a blue aqua color mana and we'll do stat dot player slash mana and then we'll do a gray slash for out of and we'll go back to B and stat.player slash max mana. And this can be customized to however you want. I'm just going to do this because I think it looks kind of good. And as you can see on the scoreboard, our mana is 100 out of 100. 
So now if we're going to put on this diamond chest plate and put it on, as you can see, our mana went, or our, sorry, our max mana went from 100 to 120, and our mana very quickly went from 100 to 120. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to quickly go back to the mana handler and just increase, just go on this conditional and just, instead of increasing it by 20, we're just going to increase it by 1, just so it's easier for you guys to see. But now if we were to take this off, it would go to, then our max mana goes to 100 and our mana goes down to 100. We put this back on. You can see the mana will go up and our max mana will go to 120. Also, if we were to hold our sword, then our max would go to 150 and our mana would slowly start to increase. Okay, so that's it for that part. I'm going to show you on how you can make it so give like items an ability or something similar to that. I'm going to create one more function. This will just be called whatever item we want to use. I guess we'll use, uh, we'll just call it test ability. We'll create that. And then inside here, we're going to check in a conditional to see if our mana is greater than or equal to 75 for this tutorial. So if we have more than 75 or 75 or more mana, then we can use our ability, which if that is true, then we'll first start by taking our net. We'll first start by taking our mana and decreasing 75. So they can't just spam the ability. And then just to show it do something, we'll just give them a speed effect for five seconds, maybe level five. We'll do one more thing. We'll just give them, we'll just teleport them. How about five blocks up? And then we'll also just play a sound because why not? We'll do Enderman teleport with the pitch 2.0. And we'll also just send a message, which I already have copied here. I'll just put it in. Basically it just says a minus 75 mana. Hey, future Alex here. I explained this part really bad, so I'm just going to tell you real quick. I did slash edit to open this menu, and then I went to edit actions, and then I just find the function we just created, test ability. Okay, you might have noticed that our mana is no longer 150, meaning if we were to take this off, as you can see, our sword is not giving us mana anymore. This is because the MBT data, or I guess the sword, was actually changed. And I'll show you why real quick. So we go back to the house settings, functions, and calculate mana. I think it's the second conditional where we check if we have the sword. Yep, we do. So the sword that it's looking for is actually different than the one we have now. So all we have to do is just update it. And as you can see, there we go. Okay, we actually activated the ability there. But you can see we do have 130 mana now. And we'll also do, to kind of just show it there, the ability working. But I'm going to quickly do it again. So we have 75 mana. We're going to right click. It teleports us up, gives us speed, plays a sound effect, and sends the message. And if we were to try it again, it wouldn't work because we don't have enough mana. Real quick, I want to point out, if your mana is bugging where it goes to 10 or something like that, try to trigger the mana handler function less often, meaning you could do it in a playtime function or something like that. If you need help with that too, you can ask in the Discord. But yeah, that's going to end off this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm looking forward to see what you guys do in your house with this. If you need help with your house, you can always ask in the Discord. I just ask that you don't ping me as there's a lot of other people that can help you too. But yeah, we're one of the biggest housing Discord servers ever, so let's see if we can maybe get number one. Also, currently, I am one of the most active housing YouTubers, so I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe. The goal for the end of the year is 1k subscribers, but maybe in the future, it'll be 30k for YouTube rank. That's it. I'm going to stop talking. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.